Just two weeks from now, Quail Hollow Club in Charlotte, North Carolina, will host the President's Cup for the very first time. And earlier this morning, U.S. Captain Davis Love III made his six captain's picks to round out his team of 12, a team that will face an international squad captain by Trevor Immelman. And those six picks, well, four players who will make their President's Cup debuts, Colin Morikawa, Billy Horschel, Max Homa, and Cameron Young, a rookie on the PGA Tour, plus two veterans in Jordan Spieth. And Kevin Kisner, here's the best of Davis of the third earlier today. Yes, I, I always say our first 12 is really good, and then our next 12 is really good. Um, and that's what made, you know, my picks um, so difficult is because you just start right on the on the list of automatic qualifiers. You, you go right past, um, you know, obviously it's disappointing um, that Will got hurt. Our first 12 was incredibly strong. We uh, almost could have just gone right off the top 12 list. But when you start at 13 and work your way down, every one of those guys is a great player and had a great year and has a case for playing. We certainly could have picked any one of the next 10 or 12 guys and, and had a great player. Um, it just happened that the way the matchups fell. I mean, obviously, there's, there's three or four guys on there that, I had a really tough phone call with, so, um, you know, and hopefully they'll look at it like I did. And I thought Dave Stockton was wrong and was being mean and didn't pick me. Um, and then I watched it on TV and I went, Oh, wow. <laughs> Maybe I don't want to be out there on Sunday. And then I played in 93 and I went, I get it. Uh, I understand what this team thing's all about. And, um, you know, if you don't, if you haven't played on one and you haven't, um, you haven't had to, pair guys up before it's it's tough to make those matchups but yeah there's a lot of great players out there and trevor had the same thing you know obviously he lost a bunch of guys but he went right down the list to some great players and and filled those gaps well we haven't been able to spend any time together um but we do we do have a lot of experience there um i was surprised to find out that cam young has not played there a whole lot even though he went to school right down the road um but most of our guys you know the golf course. It's funny on our text chains and everything, everybody kind of defers to, to Justin on because uh, he won won the PGA there. But we have a bunch of uh, we have a bunch of experience like Max. Um, Rory keeps lobbying to be on our team because he likes the golf course so much. But I'm I'm comfortable with our our preparation um, because we have so many guys that can take a rookie that that hasn't played there and show them around a little bit. Um, we're going to try to get in there and get some good practice in on Monday when it's real quiet, and then um, obviously have Tuesday Wednesday to to dial it in. And here are the twelve table. For 12, including the world number one, Scotty Scheffler, this team is stacked, robust, strong, and a heavy favorite trying to improve on an 11-1-1 one one overall record in this series. A good Wednesday to you. Damon Hack alongside Eamon Lynch of Golf Week magazine. It looks one-sided, Eamon, is it? It's maybe the most one-sided lineup we've seen since the Ryder Cup back in the pre-European Days. Wow! When you consider the depth here, the world number eight had to be picked by Davis Love because he already had six automatic qualifiers higher than that guy. So it was the world number 15, the world number 17, the world number 20. And he had to skip over the world number nine, Will Zalatoris, who was out mm. injured. That's the depth that exists on this team, which to me, in terms of a, a, a mismatch, this is like the famous 1981 U.S. Ryder Cup team when 11 of the 12 guys on that team were major winners. Yeah. The, the gap between this team and the international team seems that striking at this point. It's an impressive team. And to hear Davis talk about his top 12 and maybe the next 12 that could have potentially been on this team as well. And listen, they're going to be a heavy favorite, and rightfully so when you consider the strength of this team, the quality, the major champs, the players' champs that they have. But I will say this. The history of sports is written with big-time upsets. The one thing I am concerned about is this. What if this team is just slightly overconfident? You know, Mike Tyson back in 1990, just a little bit overweight. Instead of his usual 212, 215, he comes into the fight with Buster Douglas at 220 pounds and a half. You know, the U.S. versus the former Soviet Union. 
Villanova versus Georgetown, NCAA, you know, basketball finals, 1985. We're talking about heavy, heavy underdogs that were, you know, that were able to find a way to get it done. Is there a danger that with all of this power, with all of this strength, that the U.S. maybe is not as sharp as they could be? The only way the U.S. team loses this is if they start partying too hard on Saturday night and they end up in the county jail and miss their tea times for the singles on wow. Sunday and have to forfeit. I mean, look at the numbers. On the seven of the U.S. team are in the top 11 on the PGA Tour in birdie average. Half of them are in the top 30 in putting. They have 10 t on the team who are in the top 10 strokes gained off the tee right. in, the, in the top 50. Yeah. You know, it's... The numbers are overwhelming on the American side. Now, does the American team start to feel pressure because they are such overwhelming favourites? Perhaps, but that still requires a level of performance from the international team, and there's eight rookies yeah. on, on that team. There's a lot of nerves, there's a lot of pressure. The international team would really have to run the table in a way we've probably never seen in, in team sports and golf before for that to happen. I'm just struck by how many different ways you can try to splice this, you know, whether it's a world ranking perspective or a stats perspective or a major championship perspective, how unbalanced it seems. Look at the, the world ranking perspective. The highest ranked player, of course, is Scotty Scheffler, Hideki Matsuyama for the international. You see the average rank in the official world golf ranking, the lowest ranked player for the Americans. That would be Kevin Kistner at 26, 114. For the internationals, that, of course, Taylor Pendrith from Canada. And how about a major championship perspective? I did some numbers crunching yesterday, and I was shocked that the international team, six captains picks, 60 appearances in majors, not a single top 10 to be found, whereas with the Americans, 137 appearances in majors, 24 top 10 finishes. Of course, three majors for Jordan, a couple majors for Colin Morikawa as well. No matter how you slice it, Eamon, that's what's so, uh, so fascinating to me is that it's American strength, American strength, American strength. It is, which is slightly unusual given that we are playing the President's Cup at what is typically a year-in, year-out PGA Tour venue, when normally you'd expect guys to have a lot more familiarity with it. And Quail Hollow has been a venue on the PGA Tour for a very long time. It obviously wasn't this year when the the Wells Fargo moved to a, a different venue uh, because of the President's Cup. But even that doesn't necessarily stack up in favour or give much support to the international team either. Because when you look at the experience that the US team has at that venue versus the international team, it's quite striking. You know, Justin Thomas has obviously won the PGA Championship there. Max Homa won at Quail Hollow three years ago. Kevin Kisner has got a great record there. The total number of appearances from the US team at Quail Hollow is 32. The international number is a little misleading because of those 30, 10 of them come from Adam Scott alone. So to what Davis Love just said earlier, he can take rookies out there and pair them with guys who have a great deal of experience and a great deal of success at Quail Hollow in a way that's kind of much easier than Trevor Illmanman's going to be able to do. Yeah, when we talked to Trevor yesterday, you could tell how important of a role a player like Adam Scott is going to play on this team and a Hideki Matsuyama as well. But I just don't think that Trevor has enough of those guys, whereas Davis Love the third, by his own, you know, words, he a lot of choices that he could have made. These players are all so highly ranked, so accomplished, the resumes so thick with great moments, pressure-filled moments, from Jordan Spieth to Justin Thomas, Patrick Cantley, Xander Shoffley Olympic gold medalists. They have been there and done that. The only thing I'm concerned about is overconfidence. We're going to talk to Davis a little bit later today. I want to ask him about what are the danger spots? Because, listen, it's one thing to look good on paper. We know they got to play the game. But I tell you, from where we sit two weeks out, it looks like a very, very decisive victory, I think. For the United States. There's one other thing Davis Love doesn't have. It's literally the only thing he's missing, and that's also a positive. He doesn't have a problem child in the locker room. Now, if you look at the last Ryder Cup that Steve Stricker had to deal with, that was the Bryson Brooks feud that was ongoing and how that was polluting the team room. You go back to the last President's Cup, Tiger Woods had the Patrick Reed problem mm. heading from the Bahamas to Royal Melbourne. There's always something that's going on in, in team rooms that can impact the dynamic yeah. of a team. And Davis Love doesn't have that problem either. What he's got is a lot of kind of passionate, pugnacious guys 